Hi, this is Lady Lex, and this is my tutorial on an underwater swimming brain. So here we have our woodland villager, and he can get into the pond, and he can swim away as normal. But we want to swim under the water because I think I can see a nice big treasure chest down there. So, and there's also some other guy already in the water, so let's go and join him. So I press a button and down I go into the water and now I can swim in the water. I can stop swimming and I will now tread water at the level that I've chosen. Let's go further further down and let's open this chest and we can collect the coin. Now, if I stay down too long, you'll notice there's a meter above my head. That's my air. And you probably can't hear this, but there's a heartbeat now beating. It tells me I'm running out of air, so I need to go up to the surface quickly. And I didn't get up in time, and I died. And so now, we've respawned back on solid ground. So we'll just get back into the water. You'll notice that when you're in the water, in this particular brain, you can't actually jump out like a dolphin. Um, so if I enter this side, you, you're, just, you're trapped in there. So you will need to put in a shallow bit so that you can walk out. But that's perfectly normal if you're thinking about human beings. You can't jump out of the water like that. You need a bit of a shallow area or a ladder or something so you can get out. So let's have a look at the brain. Okay, so let's go into the woodland villager's brain. Okay, it starts off with a respawn. Now you need to set your player character to not destroy after death for this to work. So we say when started to is dead, we set a boolean that says dying equals true. And when you're dying after four seconds, uh, dive equals false. So we say you turn the dive off and we started to uh, change position. Now I've used the debug cube as my respawn position, but you would probably be calling your cube respawn. So position equals respawn position. And then you revive the player. And now dying equals false, because you've revived him. So he's now on dry land or living. Now we have a thing here, so swimming. Uh, swim boolean equals true and else swim boolean equals false and once dive equals false so we start off so that dive is false and then we set um, what our surface number variable is now this is the the uh, the y coordinate of your player when he's swimming that's the the level of the water at which he will swim so to find this out, go into your player, uh, display the uh, position of your player and, and play the level with the water and you'll find out exactly at what point he swims in the water and set it there. Uh, and then we have called page 2, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. Now we use our booleans here, so if swim or dive is true, then the height variable uh, is clamped so the maximum is the surface of the water and the minimum in this case is three that's the depth of my pond and and that stops your player from going too high or too low in the water and when you start your height in the water is the surface now when you press your Y button your height is increased so you will rise in the water and then if you do not bump terrain and you press A, then your height is decreased in the water. Now the reason we have not bump terrain is to stop your player from passing through the terrain, which it will do uh, if you're doing things with the Y coordinate because it doesn't recognise the terrain is there. However, if you put this in, not bump terrain, if there's any terrain jutting out into the water higher than the bottom of your pond which you've set, then um, you won't be able to press A and go any further down into it. Now this won't work with a tunnel, 
So if you've got a tunnel, um, you'll have to do something different. Have a look at the tutorial on the website, the instructions for that are there. So, we now set the position Y, the Y corner, the height uh, of our player using the height variable. So now the player will move his position up and down in the water. Now we're saying if the uh, position of the player is less than the surface, then he must be diving. So diving is true. And if the position is more than the surface of the water, then he's no longer diving. And diving is false. And you've got the rest of the brain, which is pretty much the same, except um, we have the left stick move, which is the same as uh, on land. Uh, but you have, when not swimming, A is jump and X plus is attack. So attacking and jumping is disabled for this brain. But the detection is still uh, used and all of that works exactly the same as it did before. So now let's look at the call page. The call page says uh, when you are diving uh, you start off with a number variable that says air equals 100 and your air is decremented by 0.1 every frame. Then it displays the air meter above its head and if the air is less than 20 but greater than 0 then play the panting noise and the heartbeat noise. And then this line says when the air is less than zero, then kill. So the player will die. And that's a call page. Okay, so we, we call that up here once we knew we were swimming. And that is basically it. So you, you're controlling the height of the player in the water using the Y and A buttons, which will remap to the space bar and the enter buttons for the keyboard. And um, you can never get any higher than the surface of the water. And you can even go any lower than uh, three, which is what I worked out when I experimented with my player. Um, and that is basically it. You don't even need to use the with swimming on the move button. So have another quick look at that then. This, by the way, is the very simple effect. Um, you can find out about that on the website. There we go, we'll go back in the water and you'll see it working. I'll go down into the water and I'll swim around. I'll come up out of the water and I'll swim over here and get out. And there we go. Very simple. So enjoy the brain and I look forward to seeing uh, lots of underwater brains being used and lots of underwater worlds. By the way, this code can be used in a vehicle, it doesn't have to be a character, and it will work just as well. Place your vehicle in the water and have the player interact with it and uh, sink and rise. Okay, thanks for listening.